to the final breakout sessions of the 2020 Singapore Institute Rotary Foundation Seminar. I would like to urge everyone to observe the house rule. When you are not speaking, please mute yourself. Your moderators for this session will be EMGA, Jess Nick Dow, and it is my pleasure to call this RRFS breakout sessions to order. Over to you, moderator Jess. Thank you. Thank you very much, Regional Rotary Foundation Seminar Training Leader, RRFT Jason Lin. Thank you, Jason. 2020 Singapore Institute Convener, RI Director Surgeon, Chi Ten Liu, Institute Chair, PDG Chu Gimbok, RRFC Jason Lim, RRFC Jun Perkon, other regional leaders, our resource speakers and panelists. Good afternoon, good evening, and good morning, wherever you are. Welcome to the last breakout session of the Regional Rotary Foundation Seminar on the topic fundraising. Despite the pandemic, our Rotary Foundation goal for Rotary Year 2020-2021 have not changed have not, and was even increased from the previous year of $400 million to now $410 million. Perhaps what will change are the strategies where we will see the passion and determination of Rotarians to achieve our goal. While we are facing a challenge in getting more donations because of COVID-19, we are sure that if we learn from the best practices of other districts and do projects with great impact, especially COVID related, the money will come. I hope you will all stay until the end of this session in order to maximize your learnings and information to reach our goals in fundraising for our foundation. Without further ado, I would like to call one of the most loved Rotary leaders in our region and the convener of the 2020 Singapore Virtual Rotary Institute, RI Director, Surgeon Chi Liu, Chi Ten Liu from Taiwan. <clears throat> AIFC Ravino, resource speaker, IFC, IFC Virginia Facon, PRID Gita, and uh, Institute Chair, PDG Kimbao, my fellow Rotarians, good evening. Today we are going to talk about how Rotary Clubs and can engage donors creative in their fundraising strategies. We know lockdown ravaged economies everywhere. The damage to the world's major economic coronavirus lockdown is more than four times more severe than that of the 2009 global financial crisis. According to the Organization for Economic Cooperation and the Development, the OEC, OECD said the severe restriction have received in an unprecedented blow to growth in the second quarter. We are talking the fundraising in today's seminar. That is to talk the fundraising for the Rotary Foundation created during coronavirus lockdown everywhere in the world. In the past 100 years, Rotarians and Friends of Rotary have funded over $3 billion in program and create lasting impact for people around the world. Without financial resources, the activities of the led Rotarian do good in the world would not be possible. Why should I donate <laughs> to the Rotary Foundation? Your foundation make a difference to those who need our help most. More than 20% of donations go directly to supporting our service projects around the world. Next is how does the Rotary Foundation use donations? Over 35,000 uh, 
clubs carry out sustainable service projects that support our six causes. With donation light years, we have wiped out 99.9% .9 in of all polio cases. Your donation also trains future peacemakers, supports clean water, and strengthen local economies. What, what we can do, we can promote peace to fight disease, to apply clean water, sanitation, and hygiene, to save mothers and children, to support education, to grow local economies. The conclusion to my speech is that we know contribution to the Rotary Foundation can save a life. We use every donation to our service project. That makes a difference to those who need our help. Polio education is still our top priority in contribution. Rotary has worked to eradicate polio for 30 years. And our goal of reading the earth of this disease inside. We started in 1979 with vaccination for 60 million children in the Philippines. Today, Afghanistan and Pakistan are the only two countries where polio remains endemic. Let us work together to close the fight. Fundraising needs every Rotarian to make the contribution. Finally, I will say fundraising needs every Rotarian to make the contribution. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, RI Director Surgeon, for your inspirational message. In a nutshell, this is what you can expect for tonight's program. Sorry. Uh, thank you, RI Director Sergeant, for the inspirational message. In a nutshell, this is what you can expect for tonight's program. We are going to hear the best practices and creative strategies from the four successful district governors from Singapore, Taiwan, and the Philippines, which resulted in record-breaking achievements in giving to the Rotary Foundation during their term as governor. I will introduce them in the order as they appear in the program. But before we call on the panelists, I will call first our lone resource speaker, RRFC Junfer Khan from Zone 10A to share something about our topic for tonight. After the presentations, we will have a Q&A portion to answer some of your questions. And this will be handled by ARRFC Penny Polycarpio of District 3780 Philippines. And then we will hear the summary and conclusion from another ARRFC, Yumi Espina from District 3860 Philippines. The chairman of the Institute, PDG Chu Gimbok, will make the closing remarks, who will be followed by RRFC Jun for the, for the adjournment. So let us now proceed with the program. At this point, let me call on our resource person, RRFC Jun Perkon, to start the session for his statement. Thank you very much, uh, EMGA Jastik Dao. And um, let me just greet our distinguished dignitaries, added by our convener, RI Director Sergeant our panelists, my fellow Rotarians and Rotaractors, friends, good evening. I did not prepare a PowerPoint anymore since my sharing will be very short. First of all, allow, allow me to thank EMGA Jess for allowing me to speak ahead of our panelists. Normally, a resource speaker will just provide support and share his knowledge during the open forum in case there's a need to answer some questions. My role really is to provide assistance and to clarify issues and share my own experience on fundraising in Zone 10A Philippines. We have already two panelists from the Philippines and both of them serve as district governors last Rotary year 2019-2020. Both of them came from top two districts of the Philippines last year. 
despite the series of calamities and the COVID-19 pandemic, the total TRF giving for Philippines exceeded more than 5 million US dollars. This was totally unexpected. And we really thought that, it, that we will not even surpass the 4 million goal we set as the goal for last year. However, there are certain lessons we can get from what happened last year. The number one lesson is that Rotarians always rise to the challenge no matter how difficult it is. This is really about resiliency of the Filipino Rotarians in times of adversities. The number two takeaway lesson on why Philippines even surpass all existing records is that Philippine Rotarians are so passionate about the Rotary Foundation. For how else can you explain why we were able to break existing records of the top three districts, namely District 3800, 3820, and 3860 in particular, and the whole Philippines in general? The last takeaway lesson I can share is that for the Rotary Foundation, Fundraising is up to June 30. Do not stop raising funds just because you are done with your district conference. It is not over until you have reached the end of the term, and the end of the term is June 30. In case there will be questions later, I will be here to support our four panelists. A word of advice for our incumbent governors this year. Do your best to achieve and surpass your TRF goals. And who knows, probably next year, you'll be one of the panelists and you will share your creative strategies on fundraising. Thank you and a pleasant good evening to everybody. Thank you. Thank you, RRFT June. By the way, uh, we are honored and uh, to be uh, Joined in by Pass Ally Director Guillermo Tumangan of District 3830 from the Philippines. Welcome, Director Guillermo. We will now proceed with our first panelist. Our first panelist is currently the ARRFC of Zone 10 Z, a Rotarian for 31 years. He is a member of the Rotary Club of Garden City, Singapore. He was club president in 2003, 2004 and district governor in 2016, 2017. Fellow Rotarians, join me in welcoming ARRFC, Michael Yee. All right, let me get my PowerPoint. All right, um, thank you for introducing me. Uh, this year, I am the ARFC. Uh, last year, I was the District Rotary Foundation Chair for my District 3310. Um, now, I'm talking about the best practices uh, for fundraising. And the most important thing in fundraising is to make the Rotary Foundation the number one choice for Rotarian donations. As you know, Rotarians give to many other charities, right? But we want Rotarians to give to the Rotary Foundation as their number one choice. As you know, we are the top, one of the top um, uh, charities in America, uh, in the USA, all right? And it won the, the charity navigator for 12 years, uh, the four star rating. Okay. Now, the next thing is to recognize that uh, for every donor, that is a donor life cycle, right? So uh, all non-profits like Rotary must recognize the donor life cycle, okay? And this is how it looks like, this one. Uh, okay. This is how it looks like. You, uh, you see that, uh, you know, there are three phases, acquisition, retention, and upgrade. Uh, now, first of all, the, uh, here the context of, for us, of course, refer to Rotarians. And then, of course, we want to, to make them uh, donors. And of course, some of them will lapse along the way, but. But that, as you know, the curve is continuous and we want to retain them, uh, right? And then we continue to engage them and then we want them to, to, to give more and more. So uh, for those who are not yet donors, we will make them uh, uh, four Harris Fellows and then four Harris Fellows to become major, major donors, major donors uh, to, 
the different levels for major donors and so on and even up to arch club right and so now so we have to uh, have a strategy for the donors at every stage of the life cycle right so the thing is um uh, we have to engage them right uh, throughout the life cycle of um, of the donor right and as you can see it is a continuous motion right you are never finished developing a donor you have to stay in touch with our donors continuously and keep on developing them and hoping that they will live more and more in the future years and next thing it is we also recognize the importance of generation and giving right now uh, generation giving refers to the different uh, generations and here you you have here in diagram form uh, the mature, the baby boomers, the gen, the gen X, the millennials, and the gen Z. Now, in uh, tabular form, the oldest generations are the uh, what are called the matures. They are more than seventy-five years old, and they are in the late elderhood, right? And then uh, for me, I'm a baby boomer, uh, born in fifty-eight, right? So I'm into my elderhood. And then next is the gen X, and then the gen Y, and then the centennials, the gen Z, right? Now the baby boomers, um, uh, you know, form the largest population segment, uh, right? And then, uh, the, and now we are uh, into our elderhood. The one that is taking over is the, in fact, the millennials, uh, Gen Y. The millennials are the children of the baby boomers. So as a result, the millennials at the moment are also uh, forming the largest population segment, and this is the group that will be giving more and more in the future years. So, um, all right, so I mentioned this. Right. So the uh, millennials embrace technology, social activism, and so on, and they want to make a difference in the world, right? So, but no matter what, the life cycle of donors and their capacity to give never change, okay? So they will continue to give and the capacity to give will be the same. And of course, uh, right now the generation taking over to the baby boomers the immediate one is a gen x right so uh they will be giving a lot in the coming 10 years before the millennials take over after 10 years so in my district the fundraising strategy uh is like this we plan to acquire at least one arch club society member and of course we had the fortune of our district governor jeff young uh, he already pledged to be an arch club, so we already have one, so, so we have secured one. And then next is to hold a Rotary Foundation fundraising dinner, where we invited uh, last year's Foundation trustee chair, Gary Wang, as a guest of honor. And we use that as our uh, as the key to raise funds for, for my district. And then of course, next thing is to get a generous donor to sponsor dollar-to-dollar -dollar matching for funds raised during the dinner. And of course, we were fortunate to get uh, my club member, uh, 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 Dr. Tan Singh, who is already an Ashkram Society Foundation Circle member, which means he has donated more than $1 million. Mm -hmm. and, we, and he agreed to sponsor dollar to dollar those funds that were pledged and raised during the foundation fundraising dinner. And then uh, our DG last year, Jeff Yong, he focused on the small clubs and the non donor clubs. Uh, especially those who have not given anything to the foundation. So he offered to all the first time uh, donors, if they donate $500, he will donate 500 points so that they become four Harris fellows straight away, right? With only $500 donated. And this was pretty successful. Many non donors became donors because of this, and many non donor clubs also became donor clubs. And of course, next is, next is to use the donor summary report. This donor summary report is only accessible to district governors because they contain private and confidential information. But of course, we have to use them judiciously because of the data privacy laws. And what we do is, what we did was uh, to, uh, to check which Rotarians are near to level one, major donor level one, or near to level two, level three, level four, or even near to arch club. So, and then when they are near to a particular level, we will contact them and say, hey, you are just a one or two or three thousand dollars away from the next level. Why don't you upgrade to the next level? And this was pretty successful as well. And of course, the finally, uh, what we do is uh, individual persuasion. These are old school methods, and this is very effective. This depends on your personal contact, and we use that to great success. And of course, uh, last year, uh, 
I had a very capable uh, fundraising chair, my district governor nominee to income. So she did a lot. Uh, um, we worked together very effectively uh, as a um, fantastic pair, and together uh, we helped raise a lot of funds. And, uh, and now I share with you. Okay, uh, yes. Now this was the dinner we had last year. Uh, as you can see, uh, trustee chair Gary Wang last year, right? We sold uh, the tables at one thousand dollars per table at the Singapore Merit Bank Plaza, right? Okay. Now. The, the results, right? So last year was a record-breaking year for my district in foundation giving. Why was it a record-breaking year? Now, this is the full report. Uh, last year, my district raised $1.4 million, right? And of these, 772000 was an annual fund. Uh, and it works up to a third capital of 368.41 per capita, right? And then polio fund, we raised 102000 uh, endowment fund, four hundred five. And other funds uh, refer to those funds like uh, cash contributions to global grant project 139. And then the um, foundation contributions by country, uh, you know, Singapore uh, raised 1.168 million. And my district also has a part of Malaysia, which is Johor, Malacca, Sarawak, Sabah. So the four states raised 128,000, right? And then Brunei, 122,900 dollars. Our DG last year was number nine. And then the uh, top three clubs in giving, uh, number one, Garden City, uh, happened to be my club. We raised 713000 dollars And then uh, Rotary Club of Singapore, the oldest club of Singapore, raised 146000 And then our DG Jeff Young's club, Banda Street Bagawan, 122000 And the top three per capita clubs, Garden City, 7530 per capita. And then next is Queenstown. And Banda Street Bagawan, again, our DG's club, 627. And the top three clubs for polio fundraising was, again, Garden City, 74,000, Banda Street Bagawan, 10,003, and Kulai. Uh, Kulai happened to be the club of our DGE and Dori. And then the endowment fund top three clubs were Garden City, Banda Street Bagawan, and the third was a tie between Bugis Junction and Queenstown. Our institute chair, uh, PDG Chukinbot, is from Bugis Junction. And this is our major donor, Arch Club Society and Deep West Society report. Uh, last year, we had a total of uh, 13 major donor level one, six at level two, two level three, and then one at level four. And we had one uh, trustees of uh, uh, Circle Arch Club, and this is our DG last year, Jeff Yong. And then uh, we also had one chair circle uh, who donated more than half a million dollars. And this uh, uh, is, the, is the daughter of our, my club's honorary member, Dato Tan Minsi, right? So she became Arch Club. So this is the cumulative total for my district, uh, the all time cumulative total. Uh, we, now we have 140 level one, uh, we have 23 level two, six at level three, three at level four. And then for Arch Club, we have two at Trustee Circle, three of them at Chair Circle, one at Foundation Circle, and Deep West Society level two, we have got one, right? So, uh, so all in all, Major Donor Arch Club, we have 178 of them. And now, um, the top 50 district ranked by annual fund per capita, uh, uh, QG1 ranked number four in the world. Top 50 district ranked by total contributions, so my district ranked number 17 in the world. Top 30 countries in 2019 to 20, Singapore ranked number 21. And then Malaysia is ranked at 23, but Malaysia includes district 3300 and 3100. And then uh, these are the countries in region 12, right? So you can see. And then uh, GG1 ranked number one in region 12 for total foundation giving. And your fund rank number one as well, polio fund number one as well. And then we are the fourth class category year, we are ranked number one. And endowment fund, we are ranked number two in the as well. Right. So this is the top 10 all time giving clubs. Number one is Garden City, $2.016 million, and so on. Yeah, these are the top 10. Okay. So I want to end with just this uh, one liner. If you fight for your limitations, you get to keep them. So, in other words, uh, we must not have any limits, right? Otherwise, we can take them. Thank you very much.
Wow. Thank you, PDG Michael, for that very informative uh, presentation. Our next panelist. Uh, our next panelist is the charter president of uh, the Rotary Club of Taipei Ricardo in Taiwan, the club named after his father. A member of the Arts Club Society, PDG Nelly has committed herself to Rotary projects that benefit and enrich the lives of children and the end polioplast campaign. She pursued projects that benefit disadvantaged children, including supporting the Betasda Home for challenged children and the Walian Anders Center. She has also raised funds for victims of child prostitution in Cambodia. Through all these vital efforts, she carries on a family legacy of Rotary service started by her father, PDG Ricardo Lin. Fellow Rotarians, please welcome PDG Nelly Lin of District 3522, Taiwan. Hello, everybody. I'm going to share my PowerPoint. Okay. All right. Um, this year has been a very exceptional year as we knew the uh, COVID pandemic. And I have been doing global grant fundraising like crazy. And I am overwhelming by the uh, uh, enthusiasm of Rotarian and every global grant, you know, the fundraising on my part will be completed within three days. And this shows how Rotarian cares. And all right, okay. Now, as the district governor elect, you will have meeting with your president-elect and discuss about your strategy plan. And you will care about the member growth, the uh, funds, contributions, and community service. And we, wish, we usually would advise every president-elect, do not put all the money in one basket. You should separate them into three because every fund has its own um, purpose. And often on, new Rotarian would come up with a question, why are we supporting M polio? In our country, we have not seen any polio victims for over 20 years. The answer is, there's no guarantee that your country does not have polio virus. The reason why we do not see polio victim in our country is, is because every kid has to be vaccinated five times. Now this is the number, actually I just double checked today, it's not accurate anymore. In Afghanistan is 54, Pakistan is 81. And if we look at the populations, Pakistan is actually doing much better because the populations of Pakistan is six times more than Afghanistan. Now, during the uh, acute COVID-19 pandemic, we still see the uh, polio vaccine is being executing. And this picture will say the this obviously must be uh, from a country that has severe COVID-19, but the baby is still taking vaccines of polio. And this is in Pakistan, and this is in Africa. And one good news for everyone that Africa already declared polio free in August, but still every kid in Africa has to be vaccinated. And unfortunately, we have seen that due to the COVID-19 disruptions, um, we leave 80 million children and immunized. And we still have to work harder for that. 
And I have very good, exciting news to share with everybody about the technology of today's, about how we deliver vaccines through drones. These two company, Australia Sweet Arrow and German Windcopter, they invented the remote aero plant. And for Sweet Company, it does landing and it can withstand 5.5 kilos, up to three kilos of vaccines. The speed for car driving takes about two hours, but with these aeroplanes, it takes only 20 minutes. And Windcopter by Germany, it doesn't stop. There's no landing, it has a box. We call it almost like, uh, you can describe it as drop box. If flight low to the destination, then it dropped the entire box, then fly away. Okay, here's what happened. And polio expense increased 400 millions this year because we are confronting expenses of transportation and pre-training for health workers about COVID-19, how to protect themselves and equipment, personal protection equipment for the health workers. Thus the expense increased enormously. And how do we inspire Rotarian to support polio fund? In my country, actually 70% of the Rotarians, they are indifferent about and polio because they have not seen polio victims for over two decades. So I was started encourage every Rotarian contribute one vaccine, $10 each person is the beginning. And gradually I was surprised because I have 2,400 members in my district. I was expecting $24,000, but it ended up $65,000 in that year. And major donors may be just sitting right next to you. All you have to do, you just ask. Especially this year, I have tried to raise the um, fund to, for, to support Global Grant. And many Rotarians would ask me how much do I want? Because the reply is, I'm sitting here in Taiwan, I'm going nowhere, I'm saving all my traveling expense, so might as well do something good for the world. And third is, I would prepare unexpected gift for members who contribute and polio. For instance, island cycling is a must do in Taiwan every year to promote and polio then never be shy to call up celebrities. I contact the motorcycle champion. His name is Thomas Luthe and ask him whether he will make a gesture of we're just disclosed to M. Polio. He delightedly to agree. And furthermore, he sent me four posters with his own signatures. And that makes a wonderful gift to award Rotarians. And this is something that money cannot buy. And they treasure it, they are inspired, and they want to contribute every year. Furthermore, Jane Goodall. And I actually pay for the chim and I ask her signature. I also give it away for Rotarian who support Polio Plus Fund. That is also a screaming gift because money cannot buy and they remember for the rest of their life and treasure it and they will continue to support Polio Fund. This year, because we are going to hopefully to have international convention in Taiwan and I just want a pair of jogging shoes. And I went to the website, Googled it, and unfortunately that the message I received due to COVID-19, we are not able to deliver 
the jogging shoes for you. So I decided, why don't we design a pair of shoes belong to ourselves? So it takes a long time to get the approval from RI because RI has a very strict rule about brand. And finally, we have a design belongs to Taiwan and of course, anybody can purchase it. Every pair of jogging shoes, you contribute $20 to polio fund and the sale price in Taiwan is $62. However, how many jogging shoes can you buy? Two pairs? I don't think you will be buying jogging shoes every year. So I study a little bit more and I realize in Europe, in the United States, in Canada, every year they sell tulips to support polio fund. And the numbers is amazing. They will sell 1.5 million packs of tulips and raise $2 million polio fund. And in Switzerland, the member will pay 40 franc per pack and 22 Swiss franc would go to polio fund. And that would click an idea in my mind because I'm a Chinese in Chinese New Year's ever since I was a kid, we have daffodils during Chinese New Year, every year, because daffodil represents love, friendship, confidence, most importantly, family reunions. You don't see daffodil blue along, they always come into a bunch. So I have this idea perhaps we should promote daffodils for fundraising because whether you are a Rotarian or you are not in Rotarian, every year you buy daffodils and this will have a sustainability and keep the funds raising going. So with that very updated technology of delivery, I am confident together we are able to end polio. I thank you for listening. Thank you very much. Wow. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Phoebe Ginelli, for that very, very inspiring uh, presentation. Our next panelist is a CPA lawyer with a combined 42 years experience in government and public professional practice. He joined the Rotary Club of Wak Wak in 1988, became the club president in 1990. And then last year, he led District 3800 in record setting TRF total giving, TRF per capita, and in cash contributions to the end polio fund, among other milestones. Fellow Rotarians, please welcome immediate past district governor Nelson Aspe of District 3800, Philippines. Thank you very much, uh, MGA, uh, Nick Dicknow, and uh, of course, good evening to everyone. Um, it's now my turn to share before you with you the fundraising best practices and strategies we adopted here in the Philippines, particularly District 3800. Of course, at the planning side, we started with selecting the best Repakala. among the best. Repakala kasi ako, ako moderator. Um, selected the, among the best, the team which will uh, com comprise the district TRF team, of course, including the zonal coordinators and the club foundation chairs or indoor directors. Now for our activities, we started with profiling of 
the potential major contributors and uh, of course additional probable additional members to the Paul Harris Society and the rest of uh, the groupings of uh, TRF contributors. We held the District Rotary Foundation seminar before the start of the year, whereupon uh, we offered um, the sharing of TRF points to those Rotarians who for the first time would be contributing in cars to the Rotary Foundation. Well, during the district handover ceremonies, part of the program was what we call a pledging session, where Rotarians in district officers who committed to contribute at least 1,000 US dollars were honored or acknowledged. And uh, thereafter, during the start of the year, our district knew with the conduct of massive educational campaign going to every zone or cluster or even at club level, both on the issue of revenue raising and how the Rotary Foundation funds are used. But of course, you see the picture here of the district handover with uh, a number of Rotarians who, con who committed to contribute at least $1,000. Eight, eight pledgers at the start of the year. Well, the partners in service couldn't be left behind. And this time for the purpose of raising funds for the end polio now bribe, the Rotaractors helped in selling the end polio t-shirts, part of the proceeds of which went to the fund drive. Each club also was given a polio fund box where they save uh, and remit to the TRF, uh, some of them periodically and some of them at one time. Well, this is unique. The third bullet there is that in some district events, um, fellowship or um, mandatory ones where attendance is so high, we conducted some portion of the raffles um, whereby lucky winners are given $25, $100 or $10 to their name, to their name. They are uh, sent to the Rotary Foundation. These houses are not left behind. One evening, they held what we call an end polio now fashion show with dinner. Revenues coming from dinner ticket sales and corporate sponsorships. The event earned modest supply, surplus with some $15, 15,000 I should say, went to the Rotary Foundation. This leave some amount for the end polio now campaign at the district. Rotarians in clubs with sold tickets and solicited funds were given foundation credits to their names. Well, here's what was featured at the Philippine Rotary Magazine last June 2020, featuring the pictures of uh, what we call champion presidents. That was our time here in the Philippines. Champion team, the champion presidents doing this uh, modeling of superheroes and uh, well, a number of designs. Also, we have we had the much heralded, much awaited Rotary Foundation Banquet with no less than TRF trustee Brenda Cressy to grace the occasion held in a five-star Manila Sofitel. Of course, this attracted more contributors to the Rotary Foundation with the acknowledgement of every contributor at that time. Plus, of course, the previous year's performers. Here, a picture with Trusty Brenda and the champion presidents of District 3800. 
Well, one feature, as we call it uh, a matter of accountability, is that of uh, the assignment or approval of uh, applications for grants, either the district grants and the global grants, and how we shared the proceeds of the dis disaster response grant. What we are trying to say here is that there is an increased club's participation by more than double in any of the previous years. One reason, we had the highest district designated fund over the years. Well, at the end of my presentation, let me now uh, give you uh, some of the features of what transpired at the end of the year, showing overwhelming support to our foundation fund drive. It is an increase. And the total give cent compared to the next highest within the district, I'm saying that. And the, it is an all-time high, as may uh, MGADGES has uh, related to us, that we had 1 million close to 39,000 for the year. The annual fund increased by 36% over the next highest. And in polio contributions, it was 35%. And uh, I'm proud to report that out of 101 Rotary Clubs, 15 gave more than 1,500. We had 14 major gift donors, including six members of the Arts Clamp Society. And this is also a record, uh, 46 major donors. We planned only for around 33, but towards the end of the year, it belonged to that figure. 2,064 array illness, a record or so. And 67 of the 101 clubs were at the every Rotarian every year category, and all of them were foundation giving clubs. And 13 were sustaining member clubs. And I'm happy and proud to report that the per capita at the district level went up by 24% compared to the second highest year. All of the 101 Rotary Clubs are foundation giving clubs. Towards the home streets, the district created a named endowment fund. We label it the Champion in Actions Endowment Fund. Well, you might ask, is there any big difference in all of this? Uh, let me let, let, let me inform that uh, the Arts Club Society members had a combined 27% of the total giving last Rotary years. And we know very well that these AKS members is comprised of um, Rotary International Director then, Rafi Garcia, three past district governors, a senior assistant governor, and surprisingly, a champion president. Of course, honored along with them are their respect, respective spouses. So, for the last five years, District 3800 has landed among the top three in TRF giving in the zone. As there have been unique generosity that guided the hearts of Rotarians in giving to the foundation. And what was the return? Simply, there's nothing except that so-called altruism, or should we say the inner happiness that somehow Rotarians, we Rotarians have paid our 
friend for being human beings. That's my penultimate slide. And the last slide is, thank you very much. And good evening. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, past DC Governor Nelson, for that uh, informative uh, and very inspirational presentation. Our next panelist is a Rotary Foundation advocate and a member of the Arts Club Society. He kicked off his term as District Governor last year with his banner campaign, If Everyone Wills, Everyone Wins. Together with this champion team, they were able to achieve groundbreaking projects and contributions to the Rotary Foundation. Please welcome immediate past district governor Everett Uy Olivan from District 3820, Philippines. Hello. Uh, thank you, EMGA Past District Governor Jess. Uh, good evening, fellow Rotarians. So um, everyone can. If everyone wills it, everyone wins. This was our banner campaign during my term as District Governor of 3820, a movement that embodies our push towards our vision of creating a lasting change in our communities and in ourselves. Together, everyone wins. But how exactly did we prepare to win? Today, let me share with you the fundraising best practices and creative strategies implemented by District 3820 in Rotary year 2019-2020. Integrity, inclusiveness, innovativeness, impacting lives. These four concepts have driven our district success in fundraising, and they all start with I. First, we have integrity. This is the core value that defines us and everything that we do. We acknowledge that the key to our success is based on the relationships that we establish with both our benefactors and our beneficiaries. As the leader of our district, it is our duty to be transparent with our financials and our projects to honor the trust given to us. <clears throat> Recognizing the value of integrity, our district implemented a full disclosure on all funds coursed through our office. To further strengthen our connections, our district consistently shared the impact of our projects and the work that we do and the lives that we have changed through our district Facebook page. Our dependability and reliability to make a difference, fortified connections with our beneficiaries and our benefactors. Our integrity therefore ensures a clear path towards a successful fundraising. Second, we have inclusiveness. Everyone can is our roadmap to success. In our hopes to reach our targets, we needed each and everyone's participation. Reaching an all time high record for the district may have been a daunting task, but with all 3,387 members of our district unifying and taking the challenge, I can say no job is too big and no task is too small. As leaders, we have created, we have to create an environment where people are welcome, where communications and ideas are open and most important. We have to make everyone feel that their participation and contributions, whether big or small, is much appreciated. Third, we have innovativeness. Creating a program for fundraising entails creativity. 
I will share with you some of the programs from our district. Our first project is entitled Go Big, Go Global with a goal of 100% global grants participation of all clubs. This drive ensures that clubs in our district understood our goal of connecting with the world through global grants. With the help of the Rotary Foundation and our partners in service, we would be able to expand our, our reach a thousand fold. Recognizing the fact that a global grant project entails research and time to make certain of its sustainability and maximize its impact. We set up a global grant committee from the district down to the club level, a dedicated team to guide and help connect with partners for our global grant projects. With our target of $1 million worth of life-changing projects, every club dedicated their time and effort to make them a reality. Our next project was the creation of unified shirts and Give Me Five campaign to support the End Polio Now initiative of Rotary. Having in mind to create a project that will serve both as a fundraising and a public image campaign, our Polio Plus team crafted the Give Me Five campaign. What started as a simple coin bank project expanded into a complete line of marketing products, such as end polio shirts, watches, jackets, shoes, and even special blended champion rotary coffee, in which a portion of the proceeds were donated to the Polio Plus Fund. With all the success of our fundraising, it is but just to recognize the people behind the projects. Our district had three major events, namely the End Polio Now anniversary celebration, wherein clubs had a fun bike event and participated in the Gigantes Festival, where giant images were made to wear rotary shirts. We also had our annual TRF night a ticketed event to recognize and thank our contributors. Finally, the District Rotary Foundation Committee hosted the very first major donor dinner, a night to appreciate our benefactors who have contributed upward of $3,000 for dinner and simple tokens. Fourth, we have the impact lives. Through to our mission, of providing service to others. All of our fundraising activities and efforts is to bring us closer to create a lasting change across the globe in our communities and in ourselves. These photos serve as a reminder of our stories that as Rotarians, we serve as a channel that connects with people and change their lives. We have the best stories and as Rotarians, it is our responsibility to be the best storytellers for us to infect everyone with our good deeds. <clears throat> everyone can. Staying through to our banner campaign, at the end of our term, we were able to roll out 40 global grant projects worth almost 3 million US dollars. We also increased our total giving by 200%, achieving an all-time record high for our district. And not only that, what is more heartwarming is that all 123 clubs in our district contributed to the annual fund and Polio Plus fund, reaching 100% club giving for our district. So please allow me to thank our district and club Rotary Foundation committee chairs and its members, our district officers, and all our Rotarians for breaking our own record of giving to the Rotary Foundation. Truly, if everyone wills it, everyone wins. Thank you and good evening. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh immediate past district governor, Evett.
Again, thank you, uh, PDJ Abbott, and to the other panelists for your valuable insights and inspiring presentations. We now come to the panel discussion. And at this point, may I invite all the speakers to be ready as we now proceed to the question and answer portion or open forum. Honestly, if you ask me, we are also excited to listen to the questions of the participants. As announced earlier, you can write down your questions in the chat box located below your uh, Zoom uh, uh, panel. And to handle the open forum, let me now call on the veteran Q&A moderator and Dean of the District 780 Rotary Academy, ARRFC, Penny Policarpio. You unmute. Thank you very much, uh, EMGA Jess. And uh, to everyone uh, here present, uh, we, have, uh, we have in the room 135 uh, participants. And to all of you, a pleasant day, uh, wherever you may be in the globe uh, at this moment. So again, uh, to all our our speakers, our resource persons, to each and every one of you, uh, our ARFC Ma uh, Michael, uh, Nelly, uh, Gov Yvette, and Gov Nelson, congratulations. And uh, we really admire what you have done. And uh, your stories are truly inspiring. And I'm sure uh, everyone has uh, given that uh, comment that uh, it was truly informative as it was inspiring. And your stories actually prove that uh, leadership does make a big difference in the lives of our Rotary districts. And you, uh, each one of you, have done your level best, beyond your level best. And so we, we certainly appreciate it. And uh, please accept our congratulations and our admiration. First uh, question, uh, all of you surpassed your uh, your records. No? Uh, all of you did something uh, beyond what you initially set out to do. You have inspired your uh, our fellow Rotarians in your respective districts. My question to all of you is, uh, was there ever a time where uh, you met uh, some sort of uh, resistance or discouragement? Now, we, we heard very very, uh, very good and rosy uh, stories. No? But uh, I am sure there were days when, uh, uh, were, ever, were there ever days when you, you thought of uh, sort of uh, doubting you know, uh, your plans and your programs and uh, there were moments when uh, you know, discouragement came into the picture. Uh, was, and, and when those days came, uh, we'd like to know how did you even handle these things? Uh, how does uh, how do winners such as yourselves uh, overcome uh, you know the the, uh, the resistance or the discouragement or the obstacles that come your way? I guess people, uh, all of us, you know, would like to know how you do handle these uh, obstacles that come your way. Any one of you would like to start off? Uh, just feel free to to start. Uh, Aisel, can you unmute the four uh, panelists, please? Hey, RFC Michael, would you like to uh, uh, to begin uh, by telling us uh, how you how you handled your uh, your challenges? Well, um, I think uh, my district was rather fortunate because uh, our district governor last year already pledged to become uh, Arch Club. Um, uh, plus six ago, so we already had one half club. And then we had, um, we also have our Arts Club Foundation Circle member uh, <coughs> called uh, Tato Tan Sin. He has donated a million dollars and above to the foundation. And he has agreed to match all the donations pledged during the Rotary Foundation uh, dinner. So, uh, I must say that we didn't experience much problem because uh, we already have this uh, dollar for dollar matching 
and that alone netted us about um, let me see uh, about five hundred and forty thousand US. So already half the battle was won. And then in the end, we ended the year with one point four million for a district. So that was a record. Um, the previous record was uh, one point zero three million dollars. That was set during the PDG Chicken Box year. Chicken Box is our PDG Chicken Box is our um, our institute chair. Uh, that was set in this year, 2013 14, 1.03 million. So last year we surpassed it. We achieved one point four million. So I, I I must say we had a very good year, and I'm and I want to thank uh, all my districts uh, donors uh, and our and our uh, Ashka Foundation uh, Circle uh, member, Dr. Uh, Tan, who met one for one. one, for one. And um, well, uh, and also, uh, uh, now of course, I have a very capable uh, fundraising chair, DGN, uh, uh, so we work okay. as a team. And then, uh, and we also individually call out uh, many potential donors. And of course, last year, I must say that um, our governor, Jeff Yong, last year, he had a very interesting idea. He gave 500 points to everyone who was willing to donate 500 points. So that one, uh, we, uh, we got a lot of new four heavies ballot. Right? You give $500 and you become a major donor. That's right. You become a four heavies uh, ballot. So, yeah, I, uh, uh, I must say that we had a very good thing. And I uh, thank everyone who had given you are uh, very fortunate, uh, ARFC Michael, uh, and uh, it really depends on uh, the people who help you and the people you have with you. So yeah. Actually, transfer having uh, for being the luckiest governor around. <laughs> Ginelli, uh, how do you uh, have you ever encountered your difficulties, and uh, how do you how do you manage? How do you what can what advice can you give us? Uh, when, when these uh, discouragements come around? Oh, okay. I think our, um, our the best idea we had, of course, was to <laughs> organize the foundation, the dinner, uh, where we invited uh, last year's trustee chair, Gary Huang, uh, as our guest of honor. So we wanted to go for a big one. So so we, uh, so we I discussed with um, our governor last year and also our our DGN to income, my fundraising chair, what was the best way to, to do it? And, and of course, um, we should organize the foundation uh, fundraising at dinner. Uh, this was the idea that was first used by our um, institute chair, PDG Gimbok, during this year as governor. Uh, his uh, RI president was one person. He came out to Singapore. And then after that, um, you know, he raised a lot of funds uh, uh, that way. Uh, that dinner itself, he raised about seven hundred thousand dollars, right? We, and we were, we were very fortunate that we, we were. Need to, we need to invite uh, uh, President Gary Wang. Uh, he's uh, uh, the secret weapon. Yes, yes. Uh, he's very popular in my district. Uh, I'm saying, and then uh, so uh, last year we were very fortunate because our dinner was held in October, October twenty nineteen, and that was way before the COVID. Crisis. So, imagine if we had postponed it to about uh, March or April, then I think the idea would have changed. So, uh, the timing, the timing, of the timing means a lot. Timing. A lot, yeah. Yes. Okay, yeah. let's go to PD Ginelli. If it's okay, uh, Michael, we can go to PD Ginelli, uh, ask her her, uh, uh, ask okay. her, her advice. Um, I think I, I just confronted a very small problems when I was a uh, district governor because uh, I encourage every club member to contribute ten dollars, but some clubs will disagree and and just wrote me a email said is this a rule or is it encouragement? I would say yeah, uh, it's not a rule. I don't force people to pay. And I will encourage you to, to contribute, but it has something to do with rotary citation. The decision is yours. But then again, I would uh, refer back another question to the Rotarian, especially you might confront the same question too. Um, why should I support 
am polio. My country is polio free. And I would ask, uh, so do you know that you pay vaccine for your country? Because you are the taxpayer. Where the money's come from, where the vaccines of our country comes from is from your tax. So actually we are supporting and polio in our own country too. So that will have a mutual understanding that everybody and every kids has to be vaccinated. We are contributing in our own country with our tax and now we are helping country who cannot afford the vaccines. Yes. Nelly, there's a question here. Can we ask uh, for uh, uh, and polio contributions from non rotarians Yes, we can. Yes, we can. And actually, uh, I, yes, if you like, you know, selling tulips in Europe, it doesn't restrict it to Rotarian. It's, it's, it's for public and you can order the tulip through websites. And for, you know, my idea is if I want to sell daffodils in boxes, I would put it on the websites. You know, you, you, if you pre-order and this is a lot cheaper and we have to negotiate uh, with the farmer who actually had the uh, uh, daffodil bobs. And I'm sure uh, it, it will be something different to try because we, we, we never thought about that. Yeah. Thank you, Didi Ginelli. Thank uh, you. Uh, you may have you, you must have had uh, your uh, days when uh, you thought that uh, things will not work out did you ever have those uh, moments and how did you handle it pdg nelson okay yeah well uh, it's a con it's a combination of uh, some kind of luck and uh, some misfortunes. But uh, on the side of luck or good thing is that by the time we had the Rotary Foundation month last number 2019, our district was already above our target. And, but no record targeted the average of the giving for the last four or five years. Now, what the Philippines was uh, uh, sort of suffered, I should say, a number of natural calamities, starting of course with the earthquakes in Batanes and in Mindanao. And the next one was the although it's not within my district, um, the eruption of the yeah. the entire Philippines. So that's the welcome COVID-19 pandemic. We thought all along that Rotarians being businessmen would prioritize their funds. And so um, there's worry that uh, contributions or donations to the reform would not be part of their priorities. But lo and behold, there are a number of things in this world that could not be explained even by the highest person in government or even in any organization. Because with these natural calamities and, of course, the pandemic, the desire for Rotarians is towards generosity, sharing, sharing, sharing. Plus, of course, some efforts done by the District Rotary Foundation team. That's how incidents of uh, well, the not so good uh, situation last Rotary year. Thank you very much.
Thank you. Thank you, Governor Nelson. Uh, just a follow-up question, uh, Governor Nelson. Uh, now that uh, your centerpiece project of uh, the fashion show will not be possible in this time of pandemic, uh, what is uh, what is on your mind? Or how will you now, um, now what will take the place of your, your legendary uh, fashion show? <laughs> well, <laughs> Um, perhaps uh, transforming Governor Tony P. Parongao uh, would not uh, castigate me, but I should say that in lieu of a similar similar uh, gamble in terms of fundraising, the District 3800's uh, transforming team led by Governor Tony P. launched what we call RAN against polio, a virtual run. Well, yours truly just uh, reported my own performance in the run. My 21 kilometers uh, got fin finished two days ago, and it was accepted. Right. Well, participants number more than almost 2,000. They pay 1,000 pesos for 21 kilometers, 700 for the 11 or 10 or 11 kilometers, and uh, uh, 500 pesos for um, the five kilometers. A bigger portion, or could I say 40% of that, goes to the end polio now fund drive. I hope Governor Tony P will agree with you. Congratulations, Governor Nelson, on your newfound uh, passion. That. You are now a virtual runner. All right, so let's go virtual to the... Runner. To the biggest district of uh, our of the Philippines, no, 3820 uh, uh, spans uh, seven provinces, three islands, and the uh, governor Ivet uh, did, you know, uh, an amazing uh, accomplishment. Uh, Gov Ivet, was there ever a time that uh, you thought it will not be possible, and how did you overcome the obstacles that uh, came your way? Okay, our district actually covers 12 provinces. Okay. And uh, well, I was quite lucky that uh, our, uh, our district, uh, district Rotary Foundation team were all uh, hardworking, uh, hardworking retardants working on our uh, on our targets. Um, by by November, when we had our uh, recognition night, we have we had already raised. Uh, almost six hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars. That's about seventy percent of what we did, what uh, we uh, we raised for the whole year. So it, we were quite lucky that we had raised so much already before uh, Taal volcano erupted in January, and then COVID came after a month or two. You know? So, um, well, uh, on all my club visits. I have actually uh, impressed upon all our Rotarians that our target was $250 per capita. I mean, it would be much smaller compared to saying that we, we, we would want to raise a million dollars. So $250 per capita would seem achievable instead of saying that our target is $1 million. So if, if uh, a Rotarian hears that the we are targeting a million dollars. They would be quite challenged, and they might, you know, they might, uh, they might be turned off in in giving to the foundation. But but when we uh, when we uh, when we told them that it's a two hundred fifty dollar per capita, then it would seem smaller, you know, compared to a million dollars. So um, we had a very hardworking team, and also our uh, annual fund chair. So uh, they kept pushing for more uh, contributions. No? And uh, I think one, well, we did a, the major donor dinner to honor our, uh, our uh, benefactors who contributed $3,000 and up. That was our first, hopefully it's not the last. And uh, it was a, a free ticketed event, no? uh, sponsored by the District Rotary Foundation Committee. So uh, it would be a plus for them. Governor I think uh, one of the questions uh, 
common descent here is uh, you think you can duplicate uh, your amazing stories, uh, all of you, the panelists, uh, our speakers, you think you can duplicate it uh, in this time of uh, pandemic, COVID pandemic? It's actually a it's challenge. <laughs> it's actually a challenge for this year. But like uh, PDG Nelly said earlier, um, she said that in Taiwan, a lot of Rotarians thought that, oh, I'd saved enough money by not traveling. So I would rather give it to the foundation. That would be, yeah. that would be one, good, one good point. And truthfully, we have saved a lot of money. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> if, we, if, if we can get our, you know, if we have registered for the Honolulu Convention, that's already $400. <laughs> So, that so that's is, outright, uh, we could give that to the foundation. Yeah. So that is the message that we should uh, put out. Um, give what, whatever you save, you give. All right. Yeah. So I guess um, uh, we have to wind up now. And uh, again, um, our, our admiration and, and, uh, and appreciation go to each and every one of you, uh, our distinguished panel of speakers for your amazing and uh, inspiring stories, uh, which will definitely serve us, serve to inspire us and to you know, help us to uh, continue the mission that we are uh, here for. So again, thank you very much, uh, ARFC Michael, uh, Governor Nelson, Governor Nelly, and uh, Governor Yvette for your uh, all inspiring uh, stories. And uh, these are truly, you are truly winners in the Rotary, for the Rotary Foundation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, ARRC Femi, for the superb handling of the open forum. Let us proceed to the next part of the program. And this time, we will listen to the summary and conclusion to be handled by another equally com competent and reliable ARRFC from Zone 10A. Please welcome ARRFC John Michael Espina from District 3860, Philippines. Can you see my screen? Yes, it's on, it's on uh, Yumi. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, EMGA Jess, and good day to everyone. In summary, I believe uh, we have learned much from our speakers coming from their experiences and their respective countries. It seems that they have actually outlined a process for TRF fundraising. And if I may uh, summarize, first step is to get to know your donors, get to know your donors. According to our presenter, ARRFC Michael Yee, there are three phases in a donor's life cycle, which describes the way that nonprofit organizations engage with and view their donors from acquisition to retention to upgrade. This matters because we want to gain new donors and retain current ones, understanding the donors giving characteristics, allow us to tailor donor communication strategies and maximizing their donations at each phase of the donor life cycle. Then there is such a thing as generational giving, where each generation of donors has cultivated distinct ways to connect with causes they are passionate about. One must know which segment might be addressed more advantageously for fundraising. Second step, is to formulate your fundraising strategies. From our presenter, PDG Nelly Lin, TRF has several baskets for fund giving. 
donors can either contribute to the annual programs fund, the polio fund, or the endowment fund. Yet one must understand that donors have a wide spectrum of givers from the small givers to the big ones. Strategies can be formulated to address your fundraising efforts, particularly to where you need it most. In the case of Taiwan, they have successfully penetrated the large donors in terms of major donor societies and arch clump societies. However, there is very little support for the very important program on polio, where statistics show an alarming trend in the rise of polio cases in such countries as Afghanistan and Pakistan. Their strategy is to address one end of that donor spectrum, which refer to the small donor contributions to polio fundraising. After all, small donations from small donors or from non-giving clubs eventually amount to similar large donations in the end. Third step is to organize your team. According to our presenter, IPDG Nelson Aspe, set up your manpower structure from the district TRF team to zonal coordinators to the club TRF chairs and directors. The team will formulate and identify major fundraising activities such as pledging sessions at the district handover program, conduct zonal or cluster or club lectures on TRF giving and how TRF funds are used, involvement of the spouses committee to hold and polio now fashion show dinners, the participation of Rotoractors in selling and polio now items. It is important to emphasize where these funds go. Make sure that district funds are equitably assigned to clubs. This will go a long way towards clubs participating in global grants and disaster response grants. Fourth step is to implement through strategies through fundraising events and activities. IPDG Evet Olivan states that TRF fundraising events may emanate from a motto such as everyone can. If everyone will, everyone wins. There are various ways to TRF fundraising through integrity, inclusiveness, innovativeness, and I forgot the other one. Starting from the small donations, coming from sales of end polio accessories such as watches, t-shirts, sweaters, jogging shoes, and bags, to holding of TRF seminars and lectures, to organizing TRF dinners, fashion shows, to acknowledging big donors such as major donors and AKS. Finally, we may add a fifth step to make use of existing TRF tools and resources for fundraising. Your Zone 10A and District TRF teams are here now and are ready and willing to support whatever initiatives we have for fundraising. One very useful TRF tool, as mentioned by ARRFC Michael, is the donor summary report. A thorough analysis of the reports will provide us a clear understanding of what is going on with regards to TRF giving. It helps us to formulate our fundraising strategies to direct our efforts to properly, to prioritize initiatives that will yield the optimum results. Finally, we have a slide on questions and answers we had recently. There was a very interesting question by the moderator. Uh, he was saying, was there ever a time you met resistance or discouragement during your terms and how did you handle it? Uh, it's very, very positive uh, reactions from the four speakers. 
uh, IRRFC Michael said that they he, he was fortunate that uh, there were AKS large donor contributors uh, willing to donate and they had also a dollar to dollar matching that was uh, actually half the battle won during his term and then there were foundation dinners inviting very important persons like past president Gary Huang which is, who is very popular in Malaysia um, and uh, PDG Nelly answered that some clubs during her term disagreed there was resistance to fundraising but uh, she says that this was all, all, all voluntary what has has to do with rotary citations if you want to have a citation the decision is yours um, and then she was asked can we sell to non-rotarians yes of course she asked she answered uh, for example the flowers the daffodils and tulips were were sold to non-rotarians for the polio fundraising ipdg nelson answered that there was difficulty in fundraising after a series of disasters, earthquakes, uh, the, the eruption of the Al volcano, and now the pandemic, but Rotarians always uh, prioritize their funds. So there was a uh, worry that they may not be able to contribute this year. Yet, surprisingly, they still do donate out of that altruistic feeling that we Rotarians have. So there may be no fashion shows, but uh, there were replacement activities like polio run. And then IPDG Evet uh, answered that fortunately, their team was very cooperative and hardworking in achieving the TRF goals, their target. So the challenge during their, this pandemic, uh, since there are a, a, a PGD Nelly mentioned there are now savings because there's no traveling, there are no meetings, no conventions. You might as well donate to polio. So that's the answers for from the four, four speakers. So in conclusion, uh, actual learning experience on best practices from our presenters have yielded impressive results. As you can, uh, we have heard from them in terms of increased contributions from successful fundraising strategies. We hope we can bring all these learnings home to our respective clubs and districts as we strive to encourage more participation for our TRF pro programs. So with that, I end my presentation. Thank you. Thank you. And congratulations. Congratulations, ARRFC Yumi Espina, for the comprehensive, very comprehensive report on the summary and conclusion. And thank you also to our speakers and participants. Without all of you, this event will not be a success. We now come to the last portion of the seminar, which is the closing remarks to be delivered by the chairman of the 2020 Singapore Rotary Institute. Friends, let us all welcome Chair PDG Chu Gimbo. Thank you, thank you, moderator EMGA Jess Nickdow, Rotary Dignitaries, distinguished guests, my fellow Rotarians. Good evening. Good so, evening. with the conclusion of the, this final session, the Virtual Regional Rotary Foundation seminar has come to an end in this eventful and difficult year. So extraordinary events call for extraordinary actions and change. So this evening's seminar and recent series of virtual seminar is a testimony of Rotary ability to change and adapt. So we should be proud of ourselves for being responsible to keep our Rotarians and family safe. So we must accept this new normal for some considerable period of time. So it has been a fruitful evening listening to our passionate and inspiring Rotarians on today's topic. You have heard from the panelists many best practices and innovative ways to raise funds. 
they are definitely a valuable takeaways for this evening. Fundraising has always been a perennial problem, more so during this pandemic. It only makes it harder. However, the Rotary Foundation is our foundation. If we don't support it, then who else will? So personally, I have no doubt that the Rotary Foundation will continue to grow and be supported for the very fact that the Rotary Foundation continues to enable Rotarians to do good in the world. So not to mention that the Rotary Foundation continues to receive perfect score for the last 12 consecutive, consecutive years for its governance, use of funds, stewardship, and so on from the charity navigator. So this reason alone is convincing for many people to continue to support the Rotary Foundation. So we must continue to tell our story, touching story, so Rotarians will rise to the occasions. So in closing, I would like to thank the following people. First of all, our Institute Convener, Director Surgeon Liu Chi Tian. Uh, Hazel, are you there? Maybe you like, I would like to give the uh, virtual certificate to our uh, speakers and... Okay, are you, okay, good. So I'll try to synchronize. <laughs> okay, number one, none other than moderator EMGA, Jess Nickdow. So oh, this uh, virtual certificate is for you. <laughs> thank you, next thank up, you, my friend. Okay, next we have panelist uh, ARRFC, Michael E. Ah, okay, we managed to synchronize, very good. Next, panelist PDG Nandy Lane. Right. Next, we have panelist IPDG Everett Oliver. Next. We have uh, panelists, IPDG Nelson Aspe. Thank you. Okay, Thank next you. we have QA moderator ARFC, Penny Policapio. Thank you. Yep. And of course, our rapporteur, AA, ARFC, Joseph Espina. Resource speaker, I cannot forget you, uh, RFC, uh, June Falcon. Thank you, thank you, Chairman. Ah, so uh, I also would like to thank our technical support, uh, PP Nico Carlo Kayaga. Kayaga. Yeah, good. Yeah. And of thank course, so I much. can't forget this gentleman, PDG Jason Nim. Where are you, Jason? Okay. I don't have a certificate for you. You would have collected about 10 of them if we have give you one for every session. <laughs> Jason Nim for organizing the RRFS, uh, the Rotary, Regional Rotary Foundation, with his fellow RRFCs, ARFCs, and EMGAs. So last but not least, you, the participants. So thank you for joining us on a Saturday evening. I know you had a choice, but you choose to join us. There must be something like close to 140. There were 140, nearly 140 just now, but I think many of you still stay on. Thank you, thank you. So I wish you all a week get ahead, a great weekend ahead. Stay safe and see you soon. Thank you, thank you everybody. Hey, 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 hey,